Cannonball! <laughs> Why waste your time? You know you want to be my friends. <laughs> Yo, DJ, pump this body. Towels are sweet. Whoosh, <laughs> Come here, top this up. <laughs> send you up against the best. Yes, sir. I feel the need. The need for speed. I don't like you because you're unsafe. That's right. I am dangerous. Tom Cruise, Kelly McGillis. <laughs> Top Gun. Hey, welcome back to another film flashback. This time, in honor of the new Top Gun movie coming out, Top Gun 2, Maverick, we've decided to flash back to 1986's Top, Top Gun. Gun. Today we are joined by our friend Antonio, actor, pretty Hello. much carried Westworld season two. I did. I did. <laughs> he I, did. It, it, it's, it's the most memorable 30 seconds of your life. I don't remember the storyline, but I remember the performance. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You might. You might you know, uh, Ed Harris really, uh, he, he had tears in his eyes. It turns out he was just allergic. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Allergic typical Ed Harris. Yeah. yeah. Top Gun. Uh, cats. <laughs> so this movie comes out in 1986. Uh, that's the year I'm from. And we, we're talking about a time when uh, Reagan's president, we're kind of high on this Cold War. It's not over yet. The Berlin Wall is not down. And so there's a, it's kind of an interesting mood in America. And I think that has everything to do with the movie that we get. I don't think this movie is the same movie that you would make in 1975. I don't think it's the same movie you make in 2020. Well, that's a was, Top Gun. Well, say, are you a time traveler? Because you said that's where I'm from. Yeah, I, I'm from there. Just making sure. Yeah. Okay. Just like I'm from <laughs> Philadelphia. Okay, great. It's when I was born. That's where I'm from. This is a, a very go get a movie. Yeah, let's go get it. I can picture people in theaters being like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're gonna. Whoop those Russians and North Koreans. I could see this movie coming out in like 2001 or 2002. Exactly. Well, I would add in there because it's it's got that very much like, and there's a lot of people um, that were against making this movie. Uh, uh, so many people turned down being in this movie, directing this movie, producing this movie, wanted no part of it because the pro-war aspect of it. So like- Pro-military it, Pro-military and like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's from the get-go, the movie, has the need for, sp for speed. speed. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! What do I do? And guns. Actually, Go missiles. Down here. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Doesn't mean it isn't a classic. It's, it's a classic. classic. Yeah. The, uh, and I'm watching this movie with fresh, not quite virgin, virgin eyes, but it's been a while eyes. And I see. <laughs> What made it great? There's so many iconic things about it, but like, it's a lot of fun. But this is not like a good movie. <laughs> I mean, they play just... they play the highway to the danger zone three times in the movie. Name another movie where they played the same song three times. Uh, like. James Bond. Um... Yeah, but it's the theme so you're saying of not James enough. Bond. Yeah, I mean, not they could have they could have had it like low. Do you think Top Gun is a classic? I love Top. Gun. Yeah, I do. I, I, I do think it's a classic. Um, I mean, it's, it's got everything you need. Jets, great music, um, more jets, guys. A bunch of hot guys and towels. Shirtless yep. and towels. Uh, who plays volleyball without a shirt and jeans? You know what? Tom and Cruz does. <laughs> I guess fighter pilots do. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, sign me up. <laughs> I, I would like to take a ride on that. <laughs> Sign you up. That's true because this movie comes out. So Top Gun is just a show off of every of uh, specifically naval aviation warfare. And very, this is totally true. Lots of people signed up for the Navy because of this movie. I did. You signed up for I the Navy. Was he, I saw him on a turned down. I was turned down. Because they said, take your shirt off. I did. And I said, I only do towels. Well, uh, in your defense, Goose, didn't wear, or Goose kept his shirt on during he the did. volleyball he scene. He did. And that's so what would be the thought, new goose. I thought I could have like a cool Budweiser sleeveless shirt. They said apparently you have to take yeah. the shirt off. 
I was, I, you know, I was trying to figure out when I was watching this going like, it's a classic. There's so many, we talk about the music, the volleyball scene. You have these classic scenes in it. Uh, but when I was trying to separate, like, all right, is this like a good movie or is it just classic? Like, this is a great movie if you're at a bar and this, the volume's off and it's just on as background noise. Because yeah. it's so recognizable. But as far as like a good movie, I'm not like jumping to go watch this again i might have a good memory of top gun from like being right. a kid the nintendo game that's impossible <laughs> like which that's a bad memory but like it, it more brings up nostalgia for me more than like i think of it as an amazing piece of cinema. But that that's what it is though right at the end of the day I think yeah like, like trying to hold up something that was that old that you have memories from that long ago it's, it's gonna be very hard like yeah. us watching Very it tonight, sure. we, like I think what we all agreed on with like Iceman is like, it's like this is a nice guy. He's just he's just misunderstood. Like well, I this, feel like this is fascinating. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I want to give him a hug. <laughs> <laughs> this is fascinating because we talk about what makes a good movie. Sometimes it's one part of the. Sometimes depending on the movie, what you say what made this movie great was the villain, and then this movie, Ice Iceman is supposed to be the antagonist, right? Does he do anything really objectionable the entire movie? Like, does Iceman is one... a saint. He's a, yeah. Does, like, Iceman seriously. for president. Yes. Also Frost played, and tips. Is also that a... played the same. True. Yeah. yeah. Wow. He was True. Same. Great casting. Iceman literally the same. No, you just. You know, if I'm going to have a beer with a guy, yeah. I'm having a beer with Iceman. Like, Maverick from day one, like, that guy's out, man. He's a dick. He should have been, been cut from Top Gun like four times. Yeah. He killed Goose. Think about it. Goose was start. I mean, like he's Maverick is too much of like, look at me. I'm gonna sing and ride a motorcycle and sing poorly and sing yeah. poorly, and then here I am with my glasses off. And, you know what? I'm gonna hang with Iceman. Yes, yeah. Goose, Goose's big scene. He goes like, "You're dangerous," and the answer is, "Yeah, like incredibly." And he's proven right when somebody dies. Yeah, and you then fucking like, killed me, asshole. And then yeah. the man dies, and Goose doesn't say, "I told you so." He goes, "He was a good man. We all liked him. I'm sorry," and walks away. That's your villain, everybody. That's ooh. That's it's about Iceman. Yeah. What Iceman? Yes. Yeah. 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 I feel yeah. like th the characters are so different between Iceman and Maverick. Like, <laughs> and I was the entire time thinking about this. Like, I actually think Maverick's the villain. It's almost like you're watching like a Ted Bundy movie, but you're, since you're watching it from Ted Bundy's perspective, he seems like the good guy. <laughs> like Maverick's terrible. I'm sorry, I said it. It's on the record. Iceman and is And that's our show. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like Maverick is a is a spoiled little child. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's 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 just like kind of like a you have to like no. No no you don't get to fly the plane that way. Yeah. No, you don't get to do the 4G7 thing, which is an actual thing. And he's supposed yeah. to learn his lesson. Like he's our main character so he's supposed to have an arc, right? He's right. supposed to have a journey. What is his journey? His journey is mm. that he is a spoiled child. Then his friend dies because he, he is a spoiled child. However, after Which was his, kind of his fault. My, my, my kind well, of kind of, except the tribunal says nobody could possibly have known that there was jet wash. He knew it. And so then his... <laughs> so then afterwards, it looks like he's learning a lesson, right? It looks like he's learning a lesson. I just killed my friend. I need to learn that right. this is like the stakes are real and that this isn't a game. And except everybody around him, they says, get him into a plane immediately. Right. She says, don't you be a coward. They say, forget yeah. about Goose. You gotta let him go. He just died. Literally two years ago. <laughs> like, it was like, it's still, you walked in here and told me he died. Just let him go. <laughs> you just informed me he died. It's still President's Day. So right. the lesson he's supposed to learn is when people die on, in your airplane, don't change. Don't do anything different. Keep being the spoiled brat you always were. I was going to say, think about this. Imagine if you, you, you got like a, some sort of an alcoholic incident and you killed your friend. Would the first thing out of your friend's house be like, you know what? Get him another bottle immediately. Get yeah. him back on the goddamn bottle. Get him back on the bottle. Get him a goddamn Jack Daniels bottle. You, 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 you get him back on that mechanical bottle. Get him on now. <laughs> get him on there now. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I So I. I don't think that this actually is a great movie. I think there's things about it we can talk about that we really love. I think that the fact that they spent the time and the effort to shoot real jets and real actors saying lines in the in the real jets makes for incredible sequences in a visual sense and then the cutting is really wonderful. The sound design, 
is on point. Right. Uh, the the cinematography is beautiful, even though the sun never sets. The sun. Did they shoot this in one day? The, the sun never sunset. sets. So the sun is long, setting for the entirety sunset. of this movie. Right. Limit it's like, a long about day. Time. <laughs> it's a long present day. day. Right. Present day. Hour and a half later. Possibly present. It's still present. That's what it meant. Right. Oh. <laughs> So I don't think, so I, I think for the time cinematically, and I, I don't want to just, I'm not ripping Top Gun. Top Gun is a lot of fun. But we're talking about like, I even think cinematically to hold an audience right now, it wouldn't work. You Like if I'm watching this movie as a, like the new one that we're, <laughs> we're going to go see it for sure. To this a theater theater it better be like significantly improved flight sequences and chase sequences. Because what we're used to now as an audience with the way, I mean, back when they showed this, what we've done with cinema since 1986, what right. we can do with the camera, what we can do with all these things. Like, I need to the uh, to be more immersed in the experience, I feel like. I'm not saying it has to be VR, I'm not saying like, but I think with IMAX, like I'd see this in 3D or IMAX, because otherwise, like, I'm watching these planes fly around. I don't, I don't get a sense for how fast they're going necessarily. And maybe I'm spoiled because time has passed and like technology just improved. So, you get those things, but just watching that, it's like okay. Well, then, yeah. I since you don't want to rip on it, I, I will rip on it. It's a hundred minute long music video. That's what Top wow. Gun. Is. Yeah, I don't give. <laughs> I know that. that I that's, do that's... not care about the characters because they what they they. Hey, them. don't say that about Iceman. Yeah, what the where Iceman got Iceman's two dimensional too. <laughs> he, they're all two dimensional. Iceman's two dimensional in the sense that he's. He, he like ticks off our jerk of a protagonist, but he's like right and normal and predictable. Every one of them is predictable the whole time. When does anyone make a choice that you didn't like think they'd make? I don't know if you felt it though, but I don't know, but I, I kind of saw something was a lot deeper with Iceman. I felt like there was a point in his childhood, probably like a parent, parental figure, like a dad or something left a little too early. <laughs> but who is, who is Iceman? Like who is really Iceman? If you notice that, I'm, if you I'm notice still the waiting scenes, to find that. there's a little twinkle in his eyes that, like, I, I see it. I'm like, you know well, what? Well, then congrats to Val Kilmer he for be, taking. Yeah. He went on to be Batman, Iceman. Well, let's not talk about that. That's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that, that may not be the best. Iceman is Batman. Of, yeah. uh, you know. right, I want to I switch it a little bit. There's so many fascinating things about the way that the movie got made and certain things that happened during the making of the movie that is just... I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I live for, the behind the scenes stuff. Everybody knows mm -hmm. that Tom Cruise isn't a tall man. So right. it's really fascinating that Six one. his leading, <laughs> uh, that uh, his counterpart has to literally wear, not wear shoes on set. And she was slouching the whole movie. Right. And they have her on a bed while he's sitting in a chair, doing everything they can to make sure that he doesn't look like a shorter man because it's his Hollywood. And Who's that more awkward for shorter. though? Probably, but that's that's, uh, a, that's such a common thing. And, and, and it is common. Can I, can I say something in, uh, in in Tom Cruise's defense, if if I may? It uh, seemed like an attack. And I'm, I'm, I'm shorter people. That's right, short guys yeah. are you, ugly. You, you, <laughs> <laughs> but to his defense, he has something that I don't think you can possibly teach. Or he has that old school film actor, the movie, movie star. star. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He has Classic. that. That 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 gene that is a truly movie star gene, like there's something about him. No matter whether it's height or whatever, but he he is that. And I'm a big. I, there's a lot. It's very easy to hate on Tom Cruise, but I think yeah. he's he's a. I think he's underrated. I think he's a underrated, great actor. Huh? Yeah, well, I he's, actually, he's polarizing. I would say we don't have very many I, polarizing. Uh, I think he's had some great now. performance. Born on Fourth of July, Rain Man. I think he's done some shit that's been like really good that has not been recognized. Of where but it people, could be. But I think people do recognize Born on Fourth of July and Rain Man. Do they? Well, those are his actually good acting performances. I right. think it was after that where they're, he's not as recognized. Well, well you, with a guy who's prolific, you can make fun of him if you want to because he's made 13 action films and he's definitely on a motorcycle in every single one. Right. Still holding onto like, a jet. Still does his own freaking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Stunts, so, right? so, like, when. But the point is, you don't get to have your own tropes until you've made a butt ton of movies you got to make a lot of movies first so it's like yeah sure it's easy to make fun of him but it's easy to make fun of every huge celebrity it's easy to make fun of barbara streisand it's easy to make fun of anybody but i think he's one of the last dying breed of a true movie star um 
I have a little yeah. quick story that I'll tell you guys really quick. I have, I have a, a inside source of uh, uh, in Paramount. Uh -huh. uh, so they, TC is who they call him. He came on and said, this is recently, right before this movie that's about to come out. Mm. Plug, go watch in the theater. It's coming soon. April, July, whatever. Did you buy stock April, in Paramount? It's June 27th. <laughs> uh, I will now. But anyway, he, he shows up in Paramount. And he shows up in the department. It was a casting department or something. He meets with a bunch of people, like associates and like PAs and all that. And he takes pictures with a bunch of them. And he leaves, right? The next day, every single person that he took a picture with, this is a true story, received a picture of them his assistant sent a framed pictures of them signed personally to them from Tom Cruise to each and every one of them. Mm -hmm. Like that to me. Like, I've heard only very, that, very, oh, very that good things about That is awesome. Like, no, yeah. Who does that? Like who does something like that? You know? I mean, a guy, one of the, like, the a guy who works 20 hours a day and is fired up for, for work. Who right. just loves it. He's happy. He, he loved getting in the fighter jets, right? So like right. when when they were trying to convince Tom Cruise, because he was up and coming, he wasn't quite there yet, but he was up and coming when Top Gun was getting made and they were trying to recruit him and he was like, I'm not so sure. I think the script's a little thin. They arranged, Bruckheimer arranged, I believe, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer, producer, to have him fly in a jet and the guy, whatever the pilot was, just took him for a loop. Right. And then uh, he gets out of it and apparently runs to a payphone and calls and says, I'll do the movie because mm. I want to make a movie where I get to do this more often. And then he says, I want to be in the jet for the movie. He goes, maybe the uh, studio is going to disagree, but I, I wanted in my contract that I get to fly in the F-14. Uh, and some of the other actors, because they put the real actors in jets. They had them flying in the seat behind the pilot. And so when they're all saying those lines and stuff, they had them in the jets trying to say those lines. And everyone threw in up, I believe. By Almost the way. everyone. There was one one of them. One didn't. one person didn't throw so up. So that means Tom did too his first time. But he was he was like, get me back in. That's all he wanted to do. He's a go-getter. Right. He's a guy in another right. lifetime could have been a fighter pilot. He's right. a rock star. I just think you still have to explain what a payphone is to our audience. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you know our audience. <laughs> Are we, do we have Explain who Tom Cruise is. 60 year old retired man <laughs> in Florida. You know what? Uh, and, Who's again, Tom? Tom? Uh, we're talking about like, again, not ripping the movie, but like there's certainly some, there's a lot lacking story wise. This movie could be told in five minutes. So like you said, a music video, that's a great example. A music video can be told in five minutes or less. And like, there's so many people that turn down Maverick and Iceman. Everything you read is no one wanted to do this movie. And it has to be because the script had to be flaming garbage. It's one of the scripts you read and like, no, no, you have to see it. You got to see it and then you'll get it. Right. Tom Cruise like, Picture yeah, this. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Not, the not jet this. goes on top. But it's the guy pulls out a Polaroid camera in a jet moving a G4 and goes, click, click. I got this. And like, get this. The okay. sun never goes down. No, never. It's Hollywood. So okay, so golden this hour. <laughs> This movie is Hollywood with a capital H. It really is. And that's okay. You love it for that reason. Uh, th so, you know, you've got Jerry Bruckheimer, which you would know from a thousand movies, but another producer is this guy named Don Simpson. Don Simpson. Don Simpson, who, who was created a total, the Simpsons. Total nut. Come on. You're Maybe gonna, not. Are you going to mislead wrong. the audience? I could. I'm sorry. I could do <laughs> and wrong. so Don Simpson was apparently having this insane character 80s movie life during this. Uh, uh, notably a uh, fan of cocaine and, and prostitutes. And he goes mm. to rehab in the middle of production. And it's like, okay, that's horrifying. Right. But he comes back after and he barges into a meeting and With starts yelling cocaine. at people. And, and he just like didn't lose a beat. And the poor guy, like, his life like peters out. But this is the man who's producing Top Gun. And when I heard about it, I just thought, I don't know. I kind of see it on the screen. I kind of see where it's like, we're, we're living fast and dying young. And we're going to make a movie about that. And the point is, you're supposed to pound the popcorn. I didn't even think about that. That's deep right Pound now. the popcorn. Do you realize, like, you just went, that, that, that's very deep. That, that was, yeah, living you, fast and dying young. Wow. That is, uh, holy crap. I think that's giving it a lot of credit. That just seemed like a nice but weekend to me, but that you, <laughs> you took it to a whole different level. You managed not to die young. No, I, <laughs> hey, you want to go on a highway? My, 
to the danger zone. My <gasps> cocaine is very different. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like. Oh, wait, those are sugar pills. Right. Another great story. I heard director Tony Scott, right? You've got these beautiful. We talk about these sunset, sunset shots, which is the whole movie now. But I realized you've got these beautiful shots of the real uh, U.S. aircraft carrier with the sun setting behind it. Well, it has to be going the right direction, you know, for you to get the shot. And he, they set it up and they said, that's beautiful. And they wanted to get the shot. And then the boat turns, you know, and he's like, whoa. And he calls the, the captain of the ship. Hey, we really liked the way you were headed for that shot. And he's like, I'm sorry, son, but we don't, you know, you don't, you don't get to tell me which direction I point my boat. Right. And so he's like, how much does it cost to get you to do this? And he gets out his checkbook and he Who's signs. This? this is the director. Oh, wow. He's a $25,000 check and gives it to the captain of the, of the ship. So that they'll point it the right direction so he can wow. get his sunset shot. That sounds right. a little, that sounds right? A little... So then Tony Scott goes in this interview I was watching, he goes, and then I let the check bounce. <laughs> <laughs> Real story. <laughs> I was like, you're a horrible person. You want to saw Hollywood, man. They freaking kick him out. They kick him out of Top Hollywood. Gun rules of engagement exist for your safety and for that yeah, of your team. It's too good, that man. Damn it. Just no too handsome. I wish I could quit you. <laughs> just can't quit those eyes. <laughs> look at me. Don't you look at me. Look at me. <laughs> now look at him. <laughs> After a movie like this gets made and you see it and it becomes a phenomenon, then everybody says the name of the title and we all just kind of assume. But it's like you have to try to watch that movie and remember that before it gets made, there wasn't a Top Gun before it, right. you know, uh, people were kind of, like you said, you had to convince people to be in the movie. They mm. were laughing at the notion. What do you mean? It's about fighter pilots, but it's not even a, during a real war. Who are we fighting? Uh, we don't know. No, no. It's like just, <laughs> just in training. All right. So that's like the first. Uh, Each other. So that's like the first <laughs> act of the movie. Yes. No, they're in training like, like almost the whole time. Here's a question. The, the costume design. Do you think there was a whole, like, the towel scene? The, all the shower scenes. Do you think that was a date? Like, do you think she was going around shopping for towels going like soft yes. enough, maybe not soft enough? No, I long, thought you were going to say small short. enough. Well, smart enough. You know, they went small yeah, as possible. Yeah. yeah. This is too small. They're not practical. That's a hand towel. Smaller. I need smaller. So, Tighter, small, so they tighter, had a guy. Smaller, which is the name of my autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming on soon. <laughs> that's, I'm sorry, Mom. I, oh, that's going in. Uh, Please don't get better. So they had a guy who, as most movies do, is a consultant, right? A guy who is a real fighter pilot, been in Top Gun and all the rest. And uh, he, they would ask him his opinion, he would give his opinion, and then they would usually do something different because they would go, it's Hollywood. They, he would say, no, they don't hang around after flying, taking showers and wearing towels right. and like sweating. No, they don't do that. They go, well, they do in our movie. He would say, you know, the upside down cockpit to cockpit thing. He goes, that's not possible. It wouldn't happen. And they go, oh, but I would have fired that guy a day. Yeah, yeah. Like, what? You don't need that kind. Of, right. What are they like? There's a is there a guy in Lord of the Rings being like, yeah. actually, guys, there's right. not really wizards. There's not like, a it's ring? a movie, man. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's no uh, yeah. there's no ring that can. Turn um, invisible. technically, there's. I bet that guy's the worst guy at parties that you'd ever yeah. want to bring. Like, I'd rather have a beer with right. Goose's wife before I. Well, that sounds. You know, <laughs> you know <laughs> what? Wait a minute. What part of the story? Uh, Spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> I, I what? Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty. Tune sure. in next week. Do I have a beer with Viper truth, before that? Truth. I'm pretty sure that the the old guy that uh, she's dating at the beginning is is the actual pilot. Yeah, the the guy that Kelly McGillis is dating. When she first meets Tom Cruise's character, when she first meets in the Maverick. bar scene, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, he's the advisor of the film. It's an actual. I thought real that was pilot. Uber driver. That's kind of one of the fun. <laughs> that is her dad. <laughs> That's one of the funny that. things about this movie is that there were so many people on set that were like the real deal. Right. What would that be like? You guys are both actors. Mm -hmm. You're you're both cast to be fighter pilots in a movie. You right. know for a fact they're going to be surrounding you with real fighter pilots. Right. And. Would you want to be in Top Gun too? Would it scare you that you had to be in the in the plane? I'm very insecure in general, so I think if they told me they found me with a lot of actual pilots, it would only add to that 
So I would try to overcompensate by just like pretending to be up. Like I would wear like a jacket, one of those like, <laughs> members only jacket and like, but inside. You would try to out-cool the out-cool, fighter pilots. Yeah. yeah, and I would do a lot of that moving of the glasses. Thing. Like, like launch pads yeah. from yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the tailspin. Where we're going. <laughs> we're going yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Tailspin. Yeah, it would be a ton of that. And, and yeah, yes, we are. Um, but no, I, I think the authentic, I think they tried to make it real, but you're right at the same time with someone who was just like, this is not possible. And they're like, well, I mean, yeah, we can talk about that later. I That's think, I think you also have to like, you don't want to, as like, if you're acting it, you wouldn't, it's, I think I'd be like, well, I would never, there's some stuff you want to like, that you always get into like, what can I use? What could I not use? So th- there's going to be a lot of stuff that a guy, I mean, you take a school bus driver, right? You play a school bus driver. You don't even need to know everything about driving a school bus. You need to know some stuff that's helpful that you can bring into the work. But not everything is being brought in. And not only that, it's not like it's realistic, but it's not a documentary on the right. Top Gun school. So it's like what you can take, great. But there's a lot of stuff that's like, cool, I'm going to take 10% of what you told me, which might be extremely helpful. But the other 90% about like, well, actually, no, we don't hang out in the locker room. Yeah, great. Well, it's in the script. So you got to bring yourself to that. So I think it would be helpful a lot of stuff. But I think you'd probably throw away 90%. Just like anything else, if you're if you're with someone that does it all the time, they're going to, oh, actually, uh, I only eat uh, hot dogs for lunch before I fly because okay. it'll make you throw up. Whatever, whatever guess, thing you know, is. Hold on. It depends gravity. a little yeah. bit. Doesn't it depend a little bit on the kind of movie you're making? Because we talk about what kind of movie Top Gun is. And it's not Saving Private Ryan. It's a different kind of movie. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. So, like, if you're making Save It Private Ryan, if you're making that movie, you right. need you need not just one. You need a thousand people to try to help you get it to be as close to reality as possible. Mm-hmm. But if you make Top Gun, hire the advisor, ask him a question, and then decide, like they did, ah, never mind, we're going to do it our way because we're making Top Gun. Yeah. I, yeah. I'd i be in a jet going... Pow, pow, pow. But I think, then, that, I think it would be different today. And, and again, to not to plug this again, right? But I feel like the Top Gun bit is coming out now, uh, coming soon in theaters. And what is it? Are you in this movie? Hey, surprise <laughs> fact. I don't. I don't want to plug it out. I'm not that guy. He might still like get cut that. out of it. I don't like to do that. But uh, yeah, but then we look like jerks. You for might, not doing it's, it's not. A they must have seen your Westworld work. <laughs> Honestly, it's not a big deal. I'm, I might be one of the pilots. It's not even a big deal. But anyway, I feel like because it was 20 years ago. I feel like nowadays, like I see, thirty, is it thirty? Yeah. There you go. So it's going to be a lot more authentic 30, now. Yeah. Thirty. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Like it's it's a lot more authentic. It would be it, this movie being made today, which is going to it's going to be very different than what it was then. Yeah. That that whole sure. genre. I mean, I mean, think about Die Hard. Think about all that. You could sit there and break down Die Hard, one of my favorite all time movies. But if you really want to break it down. There's so many things that you're like, yeah, but what that could that could he go? Th-? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So Top Gun, I think now in 2020, looking back at it, you have to just kind of take it with a nostalgic grain of salt. Yeah, like, not just, once did I even say in that movie, eh, they can't do that. But I'm not a fighter pilot. Like I, I choose to suspend my disbelief when I'm watching movies anyway. So, and I think that's you want to watch Top Gun and have fun, not be like, well, right. I don't know. Right. First place, Iceman. Second place, Maverick. I like that some people call him Iceman, like it's a Jewish last name. (laughs) (laughs) Jerry Iceman, (laughs) your prescription's ready. (laughs) By the way, Danger Zone, at least three times, right? Three or four. At least three three times. It's definitely the beginning and the end, and at least maybe twice in the middle. So we agree, not enough. Well, that song... It would have been the only song that I used. I wanted that throughout the whole movie. Did you know that song was written and then they were looking for someone to sing it? It's not Kenny Loggins' song. Uh, it was written. Sandbag. It was, they you wrote know. that song. <laughs> and so Kenny Loggins wanted it. They start it, to right? love someone. And then they just. So he wanted this, He wanted that song. And then he was like, well, I don't think we're going to get the opening title song. So uh. they went and wrote a different song. And then they went to. <laughs> so they went to. <laughs> Have you met me? This is what I do. <laughs> this is what he does. <laughs> what Santa Claus is not real. Oh my God. The fuck is next? Yeah, next thing you tell me, I'm like the getting 10 bucks for my tooth that just fell out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, take your breath away? 
Berlin didn't write that song. Oh, it was, that? It what, was is, four, what kind of fucking show is this? There was four. <laughs> this is like the heart. <laughs> what fucking show is this? Just kidding. We don't have laughs. <laughs> they went. <laughs> uh, they know. I had dreams. <laughs> wow. So both of those tracks were written, and then they wanted to find artists to do it. So they went to I think I think they went to Ario Speedwagon, and the Ario was like, "No, we want to do. We would love for you to have one of our songs, but we're gonna write it." And they delivered a song, and they were like, "Yeah, we want Danger Zone." And Loggins was in the background, like making other tracks, hoping they would take them. And he's like, uh, "I'll sing Danger Zone." <laughs> and he just takes off and just boom. Well, at least some he's like picks up his cowboy hat. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> "I can do that." And I'm you're talking about the danger zone? <laughs> yeah. I've been there. I know the danger zone. <laughs> I live in the danger zone. Ba -da -ba -da 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 -da. Isn't that crazy? That is pretty wild. And, and Berlin is two people, and the singer was like, dude, they offered us this song. Let's do it for the Take My Breath Away. And the, the her partner was like, nah, it's not our song. I don't know. If so then they do it anyway. It becomes a huge hit. And he's like, great. Now we got to do it every freaking live performance. Right. It's not our song. It sucks. Hey, imagine like, being an artist and not taking the biggest check possible. <laughs> what? What, a, what a day. What a loser. Yeah. I got yeah. it. I'd um, like to meet that version of Nick. Right. <laughs> it I never want to meet Nick. I don't. <laughs> I want to sell out as soon as yeah. I can. It's the upside down. Do you think Top Gun is like the male version of Sex in the City? I mean, like, the, like you know what I mean? Like, you are such a man. Yeah, Sex in the Sky. Oh, it, yeah. You are such a nice man right now. What, what, are, you, what are you drinking? Budweiser? Is that, what is that, Bud? Typical goose. Yes, typical goose. <laughs> what did he die? 15 year old goose. scotch. Right. Brought Shout out Viper. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, what, what, would your, uh, what would your call sign be if you were a fighter pilot? Um, slow but steady. Which is what my wife That's calls very me. long. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Slow and steady, you got one on your tail. Right. Slow and steady, you're going down. Slow and steady, you should eject. I'll ejected. get there. I'll get there. Slow and steady, on. you should eject right now. Slow and steady. Where? I Who? Think now. Right? Mine would be, I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> That's, That's worse. He's so pity. You know? <laughs> hey, I know you are, but what am I? What? <laughs> I know you are, but what am I? What? <laughs> no, but what are you doing? You're going to eject. <laughs> What? what? You got about, one on your tail, I know you are, but what about? What about you? Uh, what, what, what would mine be? Yeah, what would yours be? Uh, two left feet. <laughs> <laughs> the jet just keeps going in circles. Yeah, you know, I goose. can't get it. You know that? You know that <laughs> so goose. Sign? You're so goose right now. You're a crazy goose right oh, now. Oh, it's with two O's. Okay. <laughs> The thing, that, the thing that I find fascinating about the way that they decided to script out Top Gun is they were like, okay, look, let's make a movie about guys in fighter pilot school. And someone said, that's cool, and, but what about real danger? So at the beginning and the end of the movie, they kind of like cram in real danger because they have these MiGs from nondescript communist nation mm -hmm. that are coming in and threatening their real lives. And uh, so at the end of the movie, when they're actually shooting real planes out of the sky, how does this not start World War III, right? Is, is this not rewriting history? This is supposed to be- That could have been done much better. And so you, we are watching it and if, if you blank or you know, you get a beer, beer. yeah, Check you beer. miss that they've gone from school yeah. to the war type yeah. thing. To I, war. I think, you know, we talk about there's like this whole thing is missing an overall plot and like it's missing a lot of things story-wise. I think had they set up in the beginning, Hey, we're setting up this Top Gun school to train people for this possible imminent right. war. If there was something that was set, like was very one line from the bald guy from Back right. to the Future, whatever the whatever his name is, if you set up slightly, I might it might raise the stakes for us. So at the end, we're going like, oh cool. We're just like, what? Which would actually be really cool. Imagine like in the beginning, we're like, we need the top pilots. The yeah. top students. Because we about think this is going to go into right. I think the movie right. benefits from the fact that everybody watching has no idea how actual warfare and what it means to be out in the ocean really is. Because if you had a movie where we, you and not, you, all three of us were, were actors in gun fighting the school, right? Mm. That's what we're doing. Uh, and you did this once, actually, right? So it's like you learn you get, uh, firearms yeah. training. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, I'm I was going to say, like, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. You did, did, fire you did firearms training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you your life story. Yeah. Uh, so whatever. If, if we had a movie where the three of us are in firearms training 
and we're having a competition between the three of us and you're snapping your teeth at me and you're snapping me with a towel. Right. And then that goes on for an hour. And then at the so very nice. end, I go home where I live and then someone kicks in my door and they've got a b fucking bazooka. And now I have to use all my firearms training. People will go, that's a little outrageous that all of a sudden he's in mortal danger the second he gets out of A little ironic. School. Right. Okay. Yeah. What but but in this movie, everyone just goes, yay, Top Gun. Right. Well, there's there's a difference between irony and coincidence, right? Like this thing is, coincidence is kind of easy. Like, oh, now we have to use this training. Like irony is a little smarter, usually more better put together. Uh, it's a little coincidence that it could have been just it's a lot of coincidence. slightly like set up lot. better. But yeah. Do you agree though, as as a as an audience, I think we've become a little bit we've we've evolved also, you know, because since the eighties, how it's changed so much now. We're now we're questioning everything. Whereas before, you would go to a movie like this, and you would just this and so many other movies, Die Hard, Ghost, and all that. Back in the era, you just go there and you just be like, I'm gonna unplug and I'm just gonna buy whatever you're you're selling, and right? I'm gonna, and I'm gonna go with it. And I feel like that's that's something that I actually miss. I feel like we used to go to theater yeah. and we'd be like, okay, I'm gonna like, I'm not gonna question you. I feel like we're now you're going into theater, you're going like, oh yeah? Well, what was the moment before? How did he, like, whereas before we're like, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm in, tell me a story, and I'm gonna go with it. None of this, not much of this movie made sense, but we loved it. I loved it, I remember, like that whole, you know, it was it was such an iconic movie for a reason. Yeah, and it's fun. It, there's a I think there's a there should be a uh, differentiator between like people ask me all the time like I see a lot of movies, right? Was it good? I go, well, yeah. If you like Top Gun movies, it's great. Mm -hmm. If you don't like Top Gun movies, you're probably not going to like this movie. But like, right. you should have an expectation knowing what you're going into. Like, you can't. It's like if you go into a kids movie. Let's say you're going to see you know Smurfs two. You can't you that. can't grade that against like say Private Ryan. It's like right. no, like like well the script sucked. It's like well yeah, but you know who likes it? Little kids. Right. So it's it's not even the same thing. So I think the level of expectation for whatever you're going to see, like hey, do you like Star Wars movies? You'll probably maybe like the new Star Wars movie. And like depending on that might be a little too deep to dive, but like if you like that brand of that style of movie, yeah, great. You'll probably like it. If you don't. That's not your thing, then you're gonna probably think it sucked. I, I think, think what you're saying is that we can all agree that Smurfs Two was better than Saving Private Ryan. It was so great. Yeah, you know, hands down. Yeah. Okay. In fact, ends up and then down. Oh, what me? Oh, More speed. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another film flashback. Uh, we're gonna get our tickets. Yes. You should get your tickets to see Top Gun Two: Maverick the from water. Paramount Studios. So watch in our towels. Shirtless, jeans. Come on over, we'll be at Antonio's. Awesome <laughs> <Small towels. laughs> Thanks again, we'll see you at the theater. Handlebar. <laughs>